Good morning and welcome back. We are just about an hour now away from the ceremony and you are looking at live pictures of Marine One. That is what's going to take President Obama off to California after the inauguration has ended where Palm he Space. and the First Lady and the First Family will finally be on vacation. Palm Springs. Doesn't you that sound it? divine? Don't you want to know the itinerary? <laughs> A vacation that they truly deserve after what has been an extraordinary eight years. So it's so great to have you here. I'm here with Natalie Brandon. We have just amazing coverage ahead. And uh, let's just tell you what's happening. We've been here uh, just near the National Mall where hundreds of thousands of people are going to be um, here to witness the inauguration. And dignitaries are now arriving, politicians, including Bill and Hillary Clinton. They got here just a short time ago. And uh, many dignitaries are going to be arriving, including some of our state politicians, mm -hmm. politicians from across the nation. Uh, about 1,600 will be uh, right there on the stage, the main stage, as uh, President-elect Donald Trump takes his oath of office exactly at noon. Right now, the president-elect is with President Obama. They are having tea, and they will soon be headed here to this location uh, for the official ceremony that is going to be getting underway very shortly. Tea, coffee, and conversation, and we would love to know what is being discussed in the White House right now, again, just an hour before the official ceremony gets underway. And if you look at the official schedule, 10.30 is supposed to be the time that they begin to depart the White House, so they might be running a few minutes behind. Maybe they have more to talk about uh, yeah, before they head this way and, and even officially get this started. With the the president on is. the right, the president-elect on the left, they ride together, just the two of them, yeah. to the Capitol. And it's amazing that we're seeing Marine One overhead and all the things that we've been waiting to happen. Uh, well, I'm sorry, it flew that way, to, to be ready to take uh, President Obama. Mm -hmm. Marine One turns into Executive One when he boards. And, because he's no longer and the gets, president. He's no longer the president and gets to have a vacation. Yeah. So you've been talking to um, some of our local politicians, the senators, and, and also House members, and um, share a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because Washington State is proud to have two female lawmakers in leadership roles on either side of the aisle. So I got a chance to sit down with both yesterday, uh, and Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers, Republican from Eastern Washington, Fourth has highest ranking. A fourth highest ranking a member of, of the Republican Party in the U.S. House. She uh, actually hosted a reception for some of the folks from Eastern Washington who traveled all this way to be here for this event. Each office received nearly 200 tickets to hand out on a lottery basis. So she had a reception for them earlier in the day. She attended a special luncheon with the president-elect, and he actually uh, shouted out, gave her a shout out and thanked her for her help during this transition period as she's been a transition vice chair. Now, others, critics of President-elect Trump has, have said this is a, a chaotic period. So I kind of asked her about that and what she expects from President Trump. Take a listen. He did talk about the importance of unifying, and I believe it is. I, I think that that is one of the biggest priorities as we head into, into 2017 is to help unify this country and so that everyone believes that no matter who they are, no matter where they come from, that they can live the American dream. What President-elect Donald Trump allows us to do is really um, think big and reimagine this government from top to bottom. And I, and I think in, in so many ways, it's, it, it allows Republicans and Democrats to just you know, put forward the best ideas. And that is what she is hoping to hear uh, him talk about in his speech. We are all eagerly anticipating uh, what will be said, a speech that she says he wrote himself. That's what he said. That's what he told her during the luncheon yesterday. Also had the chance to speak with Senator Patty Murray, who is the third ranking uh, Democrat in the U.S. Senate. She will actually be seated on stage left, from what I'm told, uh, with Senate leadership on the Democratic side. And so I asked her about her expectations, uh, what she thinks of this whole process. Let's take a listen to what she had to say. Having been here many times through many new presidents, have been invited, I'm a member of the Democratic leadership and normally we are invited to the White House within the first month or two uh, to meet with the president to, to be able to um, have a, a relationship that we can establish. 
to be determined. I don't know how he is going to act. I don't know if he's going to stay in Washington, D.C. or be in New York. I don't know if he's going to reach out a hand to Congress that he has to work with or continue tweeting that, you know, Congress is bad. He's going to have to decide what kind of president and what kind of legacy he wants. So across party lines, you hear two very different perspectives. And again, this speech today is going to be critical as well as what happens in the first 100 days. It will be, and I think people are going to be hanging on his every word, looking for a message that um, will unify the country. So, of course, it's something that will be covered not just nationally, but I think globally. Yep. Now, the president-elect thanked his uh, supporters last night at that huge pre-inaugural concert uh, and dinner. There was a dinner at uh, Union Station at the main hall. Attendees included uh, top supporters of the Trump-Pence campaign, the transition team, and cabinet members. And we are going to make America great again, greater than ever before. Thank you very much, everybody. President-elect President -elect spent his final night as a private citizen at Blair House, of course, another inaugural tradition. So people attending the inaugural have a list of do's, a list of don'ts that they must follow. And uh, security, of course, is going to be extremely tight on those rules. So, you know, we saw vendors selling these. Let me just show you. Lots of these yesterday. Uh, uh, and p lots of people were buying these. Vendor vendors were just making a killing on these. But guess what? Not allowed inside oh. the venue today. Surprise, right? Not allowed. Uh, I ran I into Elio, who was on the street. I know you ran into lots of these vendors, too, mm -hmm. selling these yesterday. He was just raking it in. He was selling flags. He was selling flags for five Flattens. bucks. Yep. Uh, the large one, by the way, the large flag, that was 20 bucks. I got a shirt. That cost me 20 bucks. Hats, 20 bucks. Uh, Make America Great Again hats. You know, those were big sellers. Uh, and buttons. They were going for five bucks each. I got four or five because people at work want, you know, they wanted me to get some of those for mementos. So people had all kinds of options of what they wanted to adorn themselves with. They were buying them left and right. But the list of what they are not allowed to bring in is quite long. No balloons today. No signs at all. No placards. All no-nos. No alcohol, obviously. Uh, no animals, people. Yeah, you cannot bring your little chihuahua. <laughs> Not allowed. All of the ticket holders have been passing through this huge security tent that you see behind us all morning long. And that has been a steady stream for the last, what would you say, four or five hours? Mm -hmm. Since yeah. early, early this morning, they're uh, doing a hand check of all of the bags. And the good news today is that A, the rain is really light. It's really been intermittent, but they are allowed to bring umbrellas, which until just yesterday had actually been on that you can't bring it list. And speaking of buttons, they're going to be bundling up and buttoning up. Nice. Uh, so guys, there. who wanted these back home? I got your buttons for you. Did you like that buttoning up? I'm so, you know, usually not funny. <laughs> <laughs> and that was one more example of why I don't tell jokes. Okay, <laughs> Alex. Uh, you are also uh, responsible for some of our coverage today. What are you up to? Good morning. 